Okay, so we're gonna talk about lecture nine, logical instructions. Some reminders. Uh, we have the homework to do today at 5 p.m. Uh, and we will have exam on Friday. Um, for the exam, you can bring one letter size paper, one letter size paper, um, and a calculator. So on that double-sided note sheet, you can write down some notes. Um, and you can use those in the exam. For example, you can um, write down the instruction format uh, to remind you or some examples of the instructions, things like that. You can bring a calculator with you, uh, which can help you to do the arithmetic calculations if needed. Today we're going to first review multiplication and division instructions. How long are we going to have for the exam? We're going to have 60 minutes. It's an hour. An hour? An hour exam. Unless most of you request more time, um, but I don't expect that. We talked about multiplication instructions, <coughs> MUL and IMUL. MUL is for unsigned multiplication operations. IMUL is for signed multiplication instructions. And the results use <coughs> double number of bits of the source. Because it's a multiplication, you expect that if you multiply two 8-bit numbers, the product will be a 16-bit number. So that's why we have twice of the bits than the uh, source operand. Source usually implied in A registers, AL, AX, EAX. And similarly, division instructions, we have two types, unsigned and signed. DIV is unsigned, IDIV is signed. We also use some source operands, uh, but without using their names in the instruction. For example, we use AX and pair of DX and AX, or pair of EDX and EAX. And those are twice of the bits of specified source. The quotient and reminder split across result. We'll look at some examples. In this example, we know the content of two registers, EAX and EBX. By giving you the values of these two registers, you can figure out the other registers, for example, AX. AL or BX or BL because AX is just the lower half of EAX and AL is just lower half of AX. And we have the following instructions. We have three multiplication and three division instructions. And we assume all the instructions start with the same values in the registers given above. So that is to say, these six instructions, they are independent instructions. They are not part of a program segment. You can use probably a minute to um, work on some of the instructions. Maybe you can take one multiplication example and take a division example instruction. So I will give you one minute to um, just sketch these on paper. Correct. So they are not going to be in the test, but just want you to know a little bit about these instructions. Yes, logical instructions will be in exam.
So I can give you a hint for the first instruction, MULBL. So this is a multiplication instruction. For multiplication, we need two operands. One is given here, BL, and the other one is implicitly given, that is AL register. So the operation of this MULBL instruction is to multiply AL with BL and put the result into AX. And this MUL instruction works on unsigned numbers, unsigned integers. No, these instructions are independent on each other. Uh, we assume all instructions starts with the same values in the registers above. All right, so let's look at the solution. With the given values in EAX and EBX, we can figure out BH is uh, FF in hexadecimal. If we consider it as an unsigned value, the decimal value is 255. For the same binary bits, if we consider BH as a signed value, then the decimal value of BH is minus 1. If for the same given binary bits. And these bits will be different values if we consider them either as signed number or unsigned number. So the So we list here both hexadecimal format and the decimal format. Essentially, they are the same thing. That's the same number, even though their representation is different. So if, uh, for example, if we're, you are given this question, what is the final result in AX after multiplication BL instructions completed? You can say that after the completion of this instruction, AX has value 10 in decimal or in hexadecimal, that's A. That's the same thing. Unless we uh, explicitly ask you to 
represent final result in either decimal or hexadecimal. So the first instruction is very straightforward. We're going to multiply AL with BL, and we're going to treat the numbers in these <coughs> two registers as unsigned numbers. AL has 5, and BL has 2. So the product is 10 in decimal, and it's A in hexadecimal. The second instruction, MULBH, this is again unsigned multiplication. So we're going to take the value of AL and multiply that with the value in BH. We know in BH, if we treat the number as unsigned number, that's 255. So that is to multiply 5 with 255. So you got this product that is 1,275 in decimal. And if you represent the same value in hexadecimal, that is 04FBH. H just the suffix to indicate that this is a hexadecimal number. The next instruction is the sign multiplication. So in this case, when we do the multiplication, we need to treat numbers as sign numbers. BH, we know that if we treat the value as signed value, then that is a minus 1. The value in AL is 5, and that's positive 5. So when we do the multiplication, the product is minus 5 in decimal. You can convert that number into hexadecimal, and that is FFFB in hexadecimal. And the reason you see at the final result, if we represent the number in hexadecimal, we have four hexadecimal digits, because AX is a 16-bit value. That's why we have four hexadecimal digits. So division is similar. Uh, again, we will consider BH either as a signed value or unsigned value. If it's signed, that's 255. If it's signed, then that's a minus 1. So I have a question. Yes. So when we know like, which number of the items to convert, can you get like, the example of BL and BH? Okay. So BH was BH. We, okay, let me go back to the previous slide. Uh, first of all, we didn't do the negation as part of the operation. It really depends on whether the instruction takes the numbers as signed numbers or unsigned numbers. Uh -huh. So you're talking about given a binary value, how do you find out the decimal value for a sign number? Well, because in this case, here I have an AL times So I have to work on the I need to work on the AL. Why are you working on AL? Okay. So let's zoom into the third instruction, right? Because this third instruction deals with sign numbers. The previous two instructions, because the upper code, the dynamic is MUL. MUL is to say I want to do multiplication on unsigned numbers. So there is no negative numbers, either zero or positive number. So the, for the first two instructions on this slide, what we don't expect to see any uh, negative sign. There's always positive or zero for the first two instructions. So for the third instruction, it's IMUL. IMUL is a multiplication instruction, but this multiplication instruction works on signed numbers. When you look at a number, okay, or when the microprocessor looks at a number, it knows the binary bits. 
for that number. Okay, for example, in this case, BH has FF, so that has eight ones in that number. And this IMUL instruction knows that BH is a sign number. That's fine. So we, let's say if AL has the same value as BH, then AL in this case is also a minus one. Okay, and that's fine. We're not flipping because the reason we have in this case AL is zero file because it does have a sign bit that is zero. That's positive sign. So that's a positive five. BH, if you look at the sign bit, that's a one. <coughs> so it is a negative number. But how do we find out the decimal value of a negative number using the hexadecimal bits or binary bits? And then we do that Inverting the bits from plus one, that gives you the magnitude of that negative number. And then you add back the minus sign. So that's why you get from FF to minus one in decimal. That's the same number. It's just two different representations. And for IMUL, you can have positive multiply with negative, negative multiply with positive, or positive, multiply with positive, negative, multiply with negative. It doesn't matter. It does the multiplication of sign numbers. So this slide shows the solutions for the next three instructions, division instructions. I'll just use the first instruction as an example DIV, uh, there's a space BL. So this is to do the division uh, AX over BL. The quotient will be 5 divided by 2, that is 2. And the remainder is going to be in AH, which is going to be a 1. Again, this DIV treat numbers as unsigned numbers. So there's going to be either zero or um, positive numbers for the operands. And IDIV treats, uh, deals with unsigned, sorry, signed numbers. In the next couple of slides, we will look at logical instructions plus shift and rotation instructions. And here's a list, and or, exclusive or not, followed by a number of shift instructions, SAL, SHR, SAR, and then rotation instructions, ROR, ROL, etc. We'll begin with these logical instructions. We're talking about four of them here, and, or, exclusive or, and not. The format is upper code, destination, comma, source. Except the not instruction, which takes only one operand, the other three take two operands, destination, source. So we're going to perform this operation. So we're going to, depending on the logic upper code operation, we're going to do this destination upper code with source and put the result into destination. For logic instructions, you can have one memory operand and the source operand may be immediate. By immediate, we really mean that the source operand could be a constant number. <coughs> you cannot have a constant number as the 
the destination of brand because for destination of brand you are supposed to be able to store the result if you put a number as the destination of brand that's going to be causing problems because for immediate number there's no storage space the immediate number is encoded into the instruction it's different from a register it's different from a memory location and both of them can store values. Flags will be updated, CF, OF, sign flag, zero flag, and parity flag. From these dynamic, we know the operation of these logical instructions. And that means logical and, or means inclusive or, XOR means exclusive or, and not means a logical not. Let's look at a few logical instructions. We want to show the state of AL or the value of AL after each instruction in the following sequence. And in this example, we assume that these five instructions will be executed in sequence. So they depend on each other. So the result from the previous instruction will be used into the following instructions. So let me give you one minute to work on this problem before we look at the solution. Just to give you a hint or a quick review that this AND instruction is basically doing bitwise AND operation. If you remember things you learn in logic design class, 0 AND with 0, that's a 0. 0 AND with 1, that's a 0. 1 AND with a 1, that's a 1. So for AND instruction, you can look at these eight bits and to do bitwise and operation. That's how you can get the result. Similarly, for OR instruction, you're going to do bitwise OR operation to get the final result.
Okay, let's look at the solution. We would like to show the state of AL after each interaction. Basically, we want to write down the constant of AL after each interaction is completed, and these five interactions are supposed to be executed in sequence. The first interaction is a data transfer interaction, move. Move AL comma 55H. So this interaction will just copy the value of 55 into register AL. So after the first interaction, AL will have 55 in hexadecimal. <coughs> Second instruction is and AL comma 1FH. So we're going to take these two numbers, 55 and 1F, both are in hexadecimal. It's easier to represent these numbers in binary and then operate the AND operation on these two binary numbers because we can clearly see the bits and we're supposed to do bitwise AND operation. So 55 and 1F, if we write them in binary, we have 0101, that's 55, and then we have 0001, that is 1F. For N operation, so we're going to take bits one by one. So we're going to take the least significant bit. This is a 1. We're going to end this one with this. Again, it's a 1 on the least significant bit. So 1N with 1, that is a 1. So in the final result, the least significant is going to uh, be a 1. <coughs> the second to the least significant bit, we have a 0 here, we have a 1 here, and 0 and with this 1, that gives you a 0. So we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the bits. The final result is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And that's binary, and that you can convert it back to hexadecimal as 1, 5 in hexadecimal. So when we move on to the next instruction, the OR instruction, we should be aware that AL now has an updated value. That is 1, 5 instead of 5, 5. So for the OR operation, we will use 1, 5 and do the inclusive OR with C0. Again, we will represent these two numbers in binary. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And we're going to do the inclusive OR with C0, which is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We do OR operation. And if, it, if you have a 1, that's going to be a 1. So you have 1, 1 on the top two bits, and you have 1, 0, 1, and 1 here. So eventually, you get this 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and that's D5 in hexadecimal. When we move on to the next instruction, again, we need to remember that now AL has updated value, that is D5. So we'll have to use D5 to perform this exclusive OR operation with 0F. <coughs> For exclusive OR, we're going to take again bit by bit. If you have the same number of, same value on the corresponding bits, that will give you a 0 on that bit. So by that we mean if we look at this least significant, that's a 1, and this is 1 as well. So when you do the exclusive OR, you have a 0. On the other hand, if you have a 0 here, 1 here, then you have a 1 on the second to the least significant bit. So the final result is going to be 1101, 1010, 1, 0, 1, 0, and that is DA in hexadecimal. 
The last instruction is not. Not is basically inverting the original value in the source operand and put the result back to the same operand. So we're going to invert this DA and the final result is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And that is 2, 5 in hex decimal. Any questions? So this slide here shows exactly the same result as we just explained by executing these five instructions one by one. What we're doing here is to use a tool called a debug in a DOS environment. And with this tool, we can trace the execution of instructions one by one. And we are able to look at the values in all the registers, including the flags register. So let me just quickly go over this example. Um, this is the instruction we're supposed to execute. And we have these five instructions put into the memory. And this A is just to assemble the instruction. Um, to show that we indeed have these instructions here. And we will do a T to kind of trace the execution. So this T command will let the processor execute one instruction and then stop. So this T, once you put in T and then enter, the microprocessor will execute the first instruction and you will see these are the contents in the registers after the first instruction is executed. So the most significant thing is this AX has 0055 because AL has 55 by this move instruction. Also, right here, this AND instruction is the next instruction to be executed. So we'll do another T. The second T will allow this AND instruction to be executed. And what we expect to see is that after this AND instruction, the AL register will be updated. And this 1.5 in hexadecimal, that's the updated value in AL. So basically, you can see here, by executing these instructions on a real processor, we are able to track the values of these registers uh, one at a time, well, instruction after an instruction. And we can see that these values, D5, DA, and this 2.5, are consistent with the values we figured out by writing them on a piece of paper. Next set of instructions are called shift instructions, including four of them, SHL, SAL, SHR, SAR. All these shift instructions follow the same format. First, the opacal, which could be one of these four, and then destination, comma, then shift amount. Destination may be a register or a memory location. Shift amount is the number of bits to be shifted. It could be an immediate number, a constant number, or register CL. All shift instructions store last bit shift out of inner carry flag. So we'll see an example in the next slide. But before we see that, here we give you a brief description of these four instructions. 
as HL is logical shift left. It has a double precision version of it. It's SHLD. D stands for double precision. But we're going to just look at the integer shift in this class. The second is SAL, that is arithmetic shift left. It's going to shift to the left by that many bits, and we're going to shift zeros into the least significant bit. SHR and SCR is to the opposite direction, it's to the right. SHR is the logic shift right, and SAR is arithmetic shift right. We we'll begin with SHL slash SAL example. Because in fact, these two instructions perform the same operation, although they have two different dynamic. We're looking at here an example as HL AX comma one. S H L A X comma one. This is to do the shift. And the direction of the shift is left because of the L. <coughs> if you see SHR, that's going to shift to the right. So we um, mark left as the most significant bit side and right as the least significant bit side. The amount of shift or the number of bits to shift is 1. Let's assume that. Before we execute this instruction, AX has this value, 1, 2, 3, 4, in hexadecimal. We can represent the same number in binary. That's going to be 0001, 0010, 0011, 0100. And we know that this number of bits to shift is 1 because we have 1 here. And we have some bits some value either 0 or 1 in the carry flag. Uh, we don't really care because this carry flag will be updated after this instruction is completed. Look at this diagram. This is the value we have in register AX. This is the before. Okay. We have 16 bit value in AX and we count the number of bits from 0. So we have the least significant bit as bit 0 and then the most significant bit as bit 15. The operation of this instruction is that the value in all bits of AX are shifted left for one bit position. So if we look at bit 0, this bit will be shifted to the left for one bit position. So bit 0, the value on bit 0 will be moved into bit 1. Similarly, the value in bit 1 will be shipped to bit 2. What's important is to understand what are we going to do with the bits on the side. For bit 0, the least significant bit, we're going to put in 0 to this bit 0. Because that's how the shift arithmetic and shift logical left, it's going to do is filling zeros to the left. Basically, essentially, we're going to multiply this value by 2. And on the other side, this bit 15, because this bit is supposed to be shipped to the left. And that's out of the range of the register. This bit is shifted into the carry flag. Air flag is a bucket to hold that bit. So all the values are shifted inside AX, except that the most significant bit is now in CF, because this one has to go out somewhere. And the CF is a bucket holder. Now remember, we're doing this shift amount is 1. If we have shift amount is 2, that is to say we're going to 
shift all the bits to the left for two bits. So in that case, this zero on the bit zero will now be in bit two. And the number, the value we put into CF is actually come from <coughs> bit 14, because we gonna do that one more time. It's gone. Yeah. In that case, the value on bit 15 is gone. We lost it. Okay, so the operation is that first we're gonna do the shift and then we're gonna empty LSB by filling it with zeros. And the value shift out of MSB goes to the carry flag. <coughs> so for this example, this second line here, this AX shows the new value after this instruction. And you know that the new value comes from the original bits. And we ship all of them left for one bit. And we have zero in the carry flag because that's the original value on bit 15. So by looking at this binary value, you can represent the value in hexadecimal, and it's not hard to find that this value is actually twice of the original value. MSB is isolated in CF, and this bit can be used by conditional instructions, for example, conditional branch instructions. The value in AX now is um, multiplied by 2 compared to the original value. If you shift for 2 bits, that's multiplied by 4. So any questions about this shift to the left instruction? No. All right. Now we're going to do the opposite direction. We're going to shift the value to the right. By right, we mean to the least significant bit size. We have an example here, SHRAX, CL. Now this SH is shifting this R representing the direction that is to the right. So, S -A -L is the same, and you will see for SHR and SAR, they are different. In the diagram on the top, we have this original value, again, one, two, three, four in hexadecimal, and the, these are the binary bits on the 16 bits. And for this shift operation, the number of bits we want to shift is 2, since AL we know, what well, we assume it as 2, that's given. Okay. Carry flag has some value, uh, we don't care, because the value on carry flag will be updated. The operation of this instruction is similar to the shift to the left. This is to shift all the bits to the right, because CL has value 2, that's what we assume, uh, well, that's given. So we're going to shift all the bits of AX to the right for two bit positions. So if you look at the diagram, bit 15, the value on bit 15 is now at bit 13. And the value on bit 2 is now at bit 0. And the value of bit 1 and bit 0, those two bits are shifted out. And the value on bit 1 is put into CF. As you can see, this value on bit 0 is lost. So that's what happened on the least significant bit side. On the most significant bit side, 
when we shift this value to the right, these two locations are empty. For SHL instruction, we're going to fill in zero. Similar to what we did for the shift to the left, we're filling zero on the least significant side. For this one, we're filling zero on the most significant bit side. So this bottom row here shows the value in AX and CF after this instruction is completed. So in the destination AX, we now have 04D, 8D, and we have zero in the carry flag. So for this instruction, bit one is isolated into CF, and the result is actually the original value divided by four, because we shifted to the right by two bits. Any questions? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, to the power of n. This this is two bits, so we're dividing the original value by four. In the previous example, we shift to the left, so we multiply the original value by two. That's two by one. Okay, this SAR instruction is similar to SHR in the sense that both of them are shifting the bits to the right. However, the major difference is how we're going to fill out the most significant bit or bits. We have an example, SARAX, CL. And we assume that before the execution of this instruction, we have 091A in AX, and we have um, CL has two, and there's some value in carry flag. The operation of this instruction is that all the value in the bits of AX are shipped to the right for two bit positions. Same as what we did in the previous SHR example. However, the major difference is that here, emptied MSB is filled with the value of the sign bit. That is to say, we maintain the sign bit of the original value. In this particular example, since we have zero on the sign bit of the original value, this zero will be copied into the empty MSB. We're going to have zero, zero, and again, this zero is shipped to here because of we shipped into the right for two bit positions. If I have a one on the sign bit, then that one will be copied to fill out these empty MSVs. So in that case, we know the sign bit is maintained. So for sign numbers, if you do this SAR, you can maintain the sign uh, of that number. And for the carry flag, we do the same thing as SHR the values shifted out of LSB go into the carry flag. So for this example, we will have 0246 in AX, and we have 1 in the carry flag. So for the conclusion for this instruction, is bit 1 is isolated into CF, Result has been sign extended. The result value has been divided by four and run it to an integer. Any questions?
because whatever value that's at, uh, in AX as the final result, that makes an integer. Okay? And this last two bits of the original value are shifted out of the integer. And these two bits, actually those are the remainders if you divide the original value by four. So as a result, the value in AX is actually the quotient of that division operation. The remainder are discarded. Which is zero? Are you talking about yeah, this is zero? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if we have a one here, that means the original value is a negative number, and because SAR will copy the sign bit into the empty MSB, so the result will still be a negative number. Let's look at how we're going to use the shift instructions in the program. Let's say we want to have an application to isolate a bit from a byte of data in memory, and we want to put that bit into the carry flag. What we can do is to have such an instruction sequence. Here I have three instructions. First instruction is move AL comma bracket control underscore flags and in bracket. The second instruction is move CL comma 04 hexadecimal. The third instruction is SHR AL comma CL. We assume that before we execute these three instructions, we have a byte stored at memory location DS colon control flags. Okay. The reason we say that is because this control flags, this is assumed to be a, a constant number or immediate value, even though it's a symbol here. And this pair of bracket indicates that's a memory operand. And by default, we use DS as the data segment. And this is to assume that we have this byte each B here representing a bit. So we have bit 0, bit 1, up to bit 7. These 8 bits can be 0 or 1s. We don't really care. But we know we have a white value here in this memory location. So after the first instruction, we will have this white value put into register AL. That's because of this move instruction. After the second instruction, we will have 0, 04 put into CL. And the third instruction is SHR AL comma CL. If you remember, this is to shift the values to the right for four bits. Why four bits? Because this counter is four. So if you draw the diagram listing all the bits and move them to the right for four bit positions, you will notice that this upper four bits, this B7654, will become the lower half of AL. And the next bit, bit three, has shifted into the carry flag. And this is how we can get that bit. And the next instruction could be a conditional branch instruction. Let's say we will jump to a different place if the character is a one or if it's a zero. So that depends on the actual purpose or application of the program.
questions about this example? Okay, now we have another example for shift instructions. Given AL, which has the value 1, 5 in hexadecimal, and CL has 3, and carry flag is 0. Show the state of AL and CF after each instruction in the sequence below. By that, we mean these four instructions will be executed one after another, so they depend on each other. The later one depends on the previous ones. And we want to show the value of AL and carry flag after we completing each of them. I'll give you one minute to work on that. a few moments.
So we know at the beginning we have one five hexadecimal in AL. So that's zero 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 one zero one zero one in binary. First instruction is as HL AL comma one. So let's do the logical shift to the left for one bit. So we're gonna just move all the bits to the left for one bit, and the most significant bit zero will be shipped out of the register and that zero is going to go into the carry flag. At the end, we're going to add a zero because the LSB is empty and we need to put in zeros at the end. And that's why we have this zero after the original one. <laughs> and in hex decimal, that's 2A. So that's the final result in AL after the first instruction. In the second instruction, we need to assume the new value, which is 2A. And for the second instruction, we want to do the shift, but it's to the right, SHR. And the number of bits we want to shift to the right is 3. So take this binary 8 bits. We're going to shift to the right for 3. So all these three bits will be out. And the final, this significant bit is going to be this one. On the MSB side, because this is SHR, we're going to just fill in zeros. That's why on the top you see we have additional three zeros to fill out the empty MSB. And this zero is the last bit shipped out of the AL register and that goes into the carry flag. So the final result in AL is 0, 05 and the carry flag is 0. Next instruction is as AL, AL, 5. So we know we're going to shift to the left for 5 bits. And as AL is the arithmetic left and that's essentially the same as SHL because we have the sign bit shift out of the register. We take the updated value of AL, that's this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and we're going to shift that to the left for 5 bits. So the upper 5 bits will be shipped out of the register, and this 1, 0, 1 becomes the top 3 bits. And at the end, we're going to add in five zeros because this arithmetic shifting to the left. So the SAL is always the same as That's right. SAL is always the same as HL. SAR, shift arithmetic to the right. We're going to shift AL to the right for two bits. Arithmetic shift keeps the sign intact. So we're going to copy the MSB to fill out the leftmost positions, the ones that are empty because shifting to the right. And because two bits here, so we're adding two sign bits, and that is one for this particular uh, value in AL. So we're adding these two ones, and then the zero and zero on the least significant side will be shipped out of the register and this zero, the second zero, will be the last one shipped out of the register and that's going to be put into carry flag. So the final result will be E8 in AL and zero in the carry flag. Any questions? All right, so um, we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to uh, look at rotate, bit test, bit scan instruction in the next lecture.